Breaking news on an American arrested in Yemen, accused of being a member of Al-Qaeda. Officials now say the suspect worked at a nuclear power plant here in the United States. CBS News Homeland Security correspondent Bob Orr is in Washington with the latest. Bob, good morning. Good morning, Harry. Well, U.S. interrogators undoubtedly are anxious to talk with Sharif Mobley to find out what he might know about the emerging terror threat in Yemen. The young man who once worked at nuclear power plants in New Jersey is now linked to the same al-Qaeda branch that sponsored the attempted Christmas Day bombing. Mobley is in custody in Yemen, grabbed along with 10 other al-Qaeda suspects in a security sweep earlier this month. He was taken to the hospital over the weekend after saying he felt ill. While there, he allegedly snatched a gun, shooting one guard to death and wounding another before being recaptured. Mobley reportedly worked at three nuclear power plants after graduating from Buna Regional High School in southern New Jersey in 2002. Though officials say there is no reason to believe that he ever breached security or presented any threat on the job. His high school friends remember him for radical views, but neighbors in Buna are stunned. It's a quiet neighborhood. You never know. Officials believe Mobley may have been radicalized by extremist websites and then ultimately moved to Yemen in the hopes of linking up with Islamist fighters. But sources say Mobley was not formally trained in Yemen-based terror camps and appears to be more of a foot soldier than a fully indoctrinated terrorist. Still, he is linked to the same al-Qaeda branch as Umar Farouk Abdul Muttalib, who failed in an attempt to bomb Northwest Flight 253 on Christmas Day. Now, sources say Mobley does not appear to be connected to any imminent or current threat, though investigators are digging through his background and his contacts, and obviously they will look again at his work history at those nuclear power plants. Harry? Well, yeah, Bob, let's talk about that a little bit, because the best I could discern this morning, he worked as a day laborer. It was not like he was involved in the internal workings at these plants, was he? I think that's right. Uh, I think the officials think that this is not a hot lead, but obviously they have to look into it. And they are concerned about when he may have become radicalized. His high school friends say he had radical views going back to 2001, 2002. Although we have to emphasize, it's not believed that the nuclear power thing mm -hmm. is any real threat. The other thing that's interesting here, the threat, the, the threat, I guess, is this notion of the internet. And one of the stories that I saw in the evening news this week, the number of sites that are available on anybody's computer uh, American-based jihadist sites uh, touting this kind of material. Yeah, dozens of U.S.-based sites uh, spewing jihad and terror-related messages. And it's really interesting, Harry, that recently, in the past 12 months, there have been a number of Americans that have been self-radicalized over the Internet, and then they've done more than just have a fantasy. They've acted out on that, and they've gone overseas, and they've connected with real terror groups. Mm -hmm. This is an emerging problem for U.S. investigators. And this other homegrown, this is the second one this week, this jihad Jane who was arrested who did the same thing. I mean, she uh, used the internet to kind of whip up uh, like-minded people and went overseas in an attempt to kill a Swedish artist. Of course, that attempt failed. Mm -hmm. Bob Orr, good stuff this morning. Thank you, sir. Do appreciate it. All right.